it's been reported by Paul Tenorio and Pablo Mara from, from The Athletic that it is an imminent return for Greg Berhal to return as the U.S. Men's National Team coach ahead of the 2026 World Cup. Obviously, the, the Copa America and, and everything else uh, in between before that World Cup starts. What's interesting, Heath Pierce, mm -hmm. is that uh, we spent six months looking for other people. And now, I know that he didn't get fired, by the way. Just, I just want to make that, that that's out there. Greg did not get fired after the World Cup. They just did not renew his contract. And then at that time when they were not looking to renew, that's when all the Gio Reyna stuff happened and the investigation that they had to do on Greg Berhalter and his background and all the stuff that happened with his wife. So that had to probably do its due diligence and, and uh, for a whole bunch of legal reasons and for everything else. At that time, though, through the six months, they, we had an interim and Anthony Hudson that came in and, and took over and, and took over for the Nations League games and, and for the friendly against Mexico and a couple of friendlies in the January camp and blah, blah, blah. But still a great disciple. Do you think, by the way, do you think uh, Anthony Hudson would have rolled out that lineup tonight? I don't think so. I, I think he would have made – I don't know if he would have I think he would have maybe gone a little bit – yeah, I think he would have gone one step more conservative transitionally uh, yeah, for maybe. positional moments, but, you know, close yeah, to so that. Shout I mean, out to BJ Callahan. Yeah. Well, no, so, it, so what's interesting is that the U.S. soccer – I'm just trying to lay out the timeline, and you can add in or, or mm -hmm. if I forgot anything. But then they hire a sporting director because Ernie Stewart left. Brian McBride, gone. So, so you get Matt Crocker in. Then Matt Crocker hires Oguchi Anyewu to also help in this as they do this, this wide, vast search. And then they hire, what, like a sportology, some, yeah, some outside firm. consulting yeah. firm to help them also identify a candidate. And we mm -hmm. still have Greg Berhalter. <laughs> we still have Greg Berhalter. We're back to Greg Berhalter. You go through all of this, all these theatrics, and we're back to Greg Berhalter. And I also find it interesting that this news breaks – what less than an hour before kickoff of the US Mexico game? Like, oh hey, we're just gonna don't worry about us. We're just gonna bury this news before one of our big games. Uh it's yeah. it's fine. It, everything's fine here. I, I have a lot of questions about the timing and, and the decision making, but it looks like he's gonna return now. Now he was supposed to be the Club America coach, which was in itself was gonna blow my mind in a lot of different ways. Apparently he turned that down the last minute. Maybe he was using that as leverage to get the, the to stay relevant and and in the U S job because they didn't want to lose him. Like, okay, fine, fine. You can have it. It makes me wonder who the candidates were that he was competing mm -hmm. against and, and why those were all eliminated so quickly. Cause I feel like we still have plenty of summer left to make a decision. And, and I just have a lot of questions and I don't feel like I have a lot of answers right now. Heath Pierce. Well, I go back again, Jimmy to, to when, when you, when you take a data driven approach to anything, which is what you should do with anything. Now you have to go and, Establish a criteria that will be better than what you currently have, right? And what he did with this group and this team, by and large, who went to their first World Cups and were all new into the national team, was pretty spectacular on paper, the data, right? The data was that he was pretty much the best national team coach across everything except for away wins, right? That doesn't really matter uh, heading towards uh, the the World Cup because it's going to be a World Cup. It's not going to be an away World Cup, blah, blah, blah. He had the data. So when you go and you build the criteria, you have to go with who's available. You have to work within that the budgets. It's not – I don't want to say it's, it's as tight as, as maybe uh, Charlie had said if you were watching it on there in terms of like not having – not having unlimited budget. I, I agree they don't, but I do think that they have a healthy budget to pay a national team coach. Um, but when but you so look we're at hosting the we're hosting the 2026 World Cup. If, you, if the budget isn't there yet, the budget's going to be there very soon, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, we'll take I mean, we'll take a loan out if we have to. <laughs> take you know? a loan. Like, out. we'll be fine. Uh, I mean, but but when you think about the names that have been in the hat, right? Thierry Henry, that's one. Patrick Vieira, uh, Steve Chirundolo, we know that um, Jesse Marsh, uh, Matarazzo. Uh, I don't know how many of these are legitimate or how many of the, those were just speculation, but they're names that kind of like. You heard it seven times so far, so you sort of believe it to be uh, somewhat some truth in the conversation. And when you look at those options, you're like, there's probably when you do a SWOT analysis, there's probably they over-index in some areas, and then other areas they under-index, right? And then you look at all of that and you say, which one of those is actually better that I can trust that's going to take us to the next level? Now, what I want to find out, Jimmy, is one why they thought if those were the options, those were going to be better in the first place, but ultimately didn't believe it in the end. That's one thing. Uh, and two, if there were some bigger options 
that didn't seem the right fit and why those didn't work? Was it because of the right, offer? Right, was right. it because of the lack of job security? Was it because of the lack of clarity or power even, right? We saw with Jurgen what he wanted when he came in. We see with, you know, Greg Vanny or, or Bob Bradley, they're the coach and sporting director, director at their club, right? The demands and, and the writers that come with these, these coaches that want to implement things their way, there's a lot that goes into that, right? The, the way the Philadelphia Union build their academy is through a philosophy of, of their sporting director, Ernst Tanner. If you don't fit within that, they will change you, right? You don't fit within that picture. U.S. soccer has a system, like it or hate it, you still have to fit within all that. You add Matt Crocker to that, and now it's a dynamic that you, you can bend on some things, but you can't break, right? You can't let somebody come in and go carte blanche. And so I'm... I, Without knowing who the actual candidates actually were, it's tough to say how I how I really feel about it. But it does feel like a lot of wasted time uh, to just That's get back to where like we where 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 we were, right? And and, and, I, I, you, and we basically wasted about money, right? I mean, yeah, go but, ahead. Oh, absolutely wasted money. Uh, but 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 and it, and it takes me back to the fact that we've been joking the last few days about how many players in the national team started talking about Greg Berhalter yes. recently being like, oh yeah, yes. I would give him another chance or, oh, I would, it's I would, they I knew. Mind. like I thought he did they a good knew. job and yeah. And they knew, but where were any of these guys when things were going wrong and they were talking about Greg Berhalter, like there was none of that, right? Nobody wanted to speak up and speak out of that. I, I'm sure there was a couple of players that did, but no, by Christian, and large, Christian came yeah. out. Um, Christian had an interview what two months, three months ago, four months ago, where he said something yeah. about how he, he thought that Greg moved us forward and, and he basically echoed the same sentiments that he'd said, uh yeah. just recently and, and, but but and, yes and there's definitely uh there's been an uptick of of greg in a positive light uh from the players in the last week or so which makes me think that they knew that this was coming because mm -hmm. there'd just be no other reason as to why i know they're being asked questions about it potentially but it felt like uh instead of them maybe politely or or uh you know navigating those those tough questions with some yeah, these guys have all been pretty good in the media at this point. Uh, they started to answer a little bit more directly and were positive about about mm -hmm. Greg. So, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be. So yeah, I have a lot of questions with regard to how it all unfolded, and and now that we have a name with Matt Crocker, I, I need to I need to get some answers, right? I mean, it, it just you do all that, you get hired, and then you just come back to the same guy that we just had. Now, as everybody knows, I'll keep my flag in the ground. I don't think that the U.S. should, or any any national team, for that for that matter, should have a World Cup coach for more than one World Cup cycle. Having lived through it, I feel like the players just need to hear a different voice. I think it it keeps you sharp. You you don't necessarily settle and, and, and get comfortable, right? You're always a little bit on edge, which which can work for or against you. Sometimes some players do like that, that comfort and culture that they're used to. And obviously something that the players all talk about how they're in this together and, and Greg fostered this culture and, and we want to keep it going. And, and I think that that's because of, yes, Greg did put those, those parameters in place, but it's also a choice by the players to say, when I come into the national team, I love being around those guys. And mm -hmm. so I, I think that, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I'm disappointed because I, this is just, we, we've done this a lot and we always seem to go to that, that second world cup cycle with another coach and that second world cup cycle never works. The problem is we don't have a, a world cup qualifying campaign to keep us honest um, mm -hmm. in that second world cup qualifying cycle. Well, I mean, we okay. It, but if, we, if get we, the, the we get embarrassed in Copa America, then what? Yeah. Then what? I mean, exactly. Are we going to really I, fire him at that point? I, like, that's the I, only I, competition we have. I do think it is on us soccer now to set the standard for the, the Copa America that says this is the biggest tournament for us in our foreseeable future. This is yes. our test. Where are we? And it's not about, and it, I, I say this about, about the, the, the U twenties too. Like it, U twenties wasn't necessarily about going to win the world cup, but it was about like being tested and pushing ourselves out there. We need to go into that. I'm not saying we got to win Copa America, but if the attitude is off, if the, if, if we're not putting in the, the, the work, if the rhythm isn't there, if the players and the coach seem to be on a different page, then you're going to know something, right? And we need to know that as a checkpoint because we're not going to have those qualifiers that go, oh, man, we're falling behind. We're in third place in qualifying and we're going to squeak out and that sort of thing. Like all of that mediocrity where it's like plus two, minus two is the only way in which we, we judge ourselves, I don't think works. But if we go in and U.S. soccer or Matt Crocker starting to set that standard that goes in the same way that a Mexico coach is under the gun every time that they play, it's – we're not happy right now, right? You go into the, you go into the, we don't win the gold cup. Okay. 
without our coach. Going into the Copa America, okay, we're expected to go on a deep run and challenge for this. We want to be one of the favorites for this, right? And that's the standard that we have to set. And then it's within all that is all the little details, as you know, Jimmy. Like we could play horribly and get to a semifinal in the way in the way that uh, Portugal did in the Euros, or we can play beautifully and say, okay, there's something happening here. Let's ride with this. Well, that's that's something I've been preaching for a long time, ever since I interviewed Jurgen Klinsmann a long time ago. I mean, at what point are we going to try to send a message like, oh, we're not going to play to our stereotypes, which was sitting back, countering, hitting teams on set pieces, whatever it may be. And when are we going to start going after teams? Like, I, I want to see what we did against Mexico tonight, and I want to see that against the Dutch or, or in, in a meaningful competition. You know, I mean, friendlies are one thing. We've obviously had some great results against friendlies especially under Jurgen Klinsmann. I, for whatever reason, he was awesome against the big teams in friendlies and, and really got our team in a good spot to make that happen. But I want to see that kind of swashbuckling style and, and us solving problems. Because obviously when you start to play against teams that are better, let's say the Dutch, even the World Cup, they made some adjustments that we didn't counter. So, so I need to see that, right? We talk about where we finish, but you and I also want to see, and I think a lot of people that listen and, and, and appreciate the show, we also want to see us get better at these nuances and subtleties of the game where we can adjust quickly and be fluid and understand, ah, they're taking this away. Plan A's out. Okay, cool. Let's get to plan B. That, that is so important to me when I watch these games that when you can identify what the other team's trying to take away from you, but then now you're going to try to exploit what they are giving you or the space that they're trying to give you. So these are the little areas that I want to see us get better, and, better at and that, and that we can continue to kind of keep our playing on the front foot, as it were. But, but also being comfortable with being on the back foot, right? Like, we're, we're so good on both sides of the ball. Like, okay, cool. We don't have the ball right now. We're playing against yeah. a – I'm going to put air quotes for people not watching – superior opponent. But mm -hmm. we're still not completely – not in control, not not in control of this game. And so, yeah. so there's that element of the game that I want to see and, and how successful we can be in kind of each third of the field, whether we have the ball or, or whether we don't.